Oh, are we on the air? Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we're going to talk about jump shots. If you don't have a jump shot in your game, by the end of this video, you will be pretty close to having one. We're going to talk about equipment first, but then I'm going to break this down into five different categories. Uh, category one, what is a legal jump shot? So if you're shooting scoop shots, let's get that out of your game. So we'll talk about what a legal jump shot is, how to execute that shot, how to fix that shot. Uh, if your jump shot is broken, uh, I'll show you how to work your way up to being able to clear a ball and make an object ball. And I will show you how to shoot a jump masse. Before the end of this video, you will know all the mechanics in shooting a jump masse. And you might be an hour or five hours or a month away from being able to execute the shot. But I can tell you that some of you at the end of the video will be able to execute the shot. It really depends on your stroke, uh, your commitment to the shot, things like that. And I'll show you some drills as far as how to make these different shots. But I'm going to show you a number of different ways to shoot the jump shot and put spin on the ball so that you can execute a jump masse. So I recently did a video on the Predator Air 2 jump cue. And a number of people hit me back in the comments because I wanted to know what you guys were jumping with. Uh, some guys have never owned a jump cue, didn't know if they wanted to invest in a jump cue or not. Uh, some guys have a jump break cue, which I'll talk about what that is for those of you who aren't familiar. Also, I got comments from guys that think that they can kick so well that they never have to shoot a jump shot. Well, there's always a situation where a kick shot is not possible. Jump shots are necessary and more necessary as you get better and better and your competition gets better and better. If you're playing on a low level and no one plays safe on you or they don't have the ability to play safe uh, or you're in a league that doesn't allow you to use the proper equipment to shoot a jump shot or you may play places where they don't allow you to execute a jump shot, that's a whole different story. That I can understand. In the meantime, I still have a lot of shots in which only a jump shot is going to make that ball or get me out of trouble. The major difference between kicks and jumps is that jump shots are direct. The chances of you making a ball or hitting a ball with a jump shot, which is a direct path to that ball, are magnified maybe 10, maybe 100 times. So let's talk about the difference between a jump cue and a jump break cue. This is a designated jump cue. This is a Predator Air 2. It is um, obviously one of the nicest jump cues that you're gonna get out there, but one of the things that makes it nice is its weight. So this is a scale, and if I put the Predator Air 2 on here, uh, this weighs 9.4 ounces. This is a jump break cue. So what happens is you break with this when it's all together, and then if you have to shoot a jump shot, you take this end off and you've got this so you have a much lighter vehicle for shooting that jump shot. The purpose behind jump cues being shorter and lighter is it allows the cue to get out of the way of the cue ball when you're shooting the jump shot. I don't care who you are, a lighter jump cue gives you more elevation on the cue ball than a heavier jump cue. Nevertheless, you can see that when these are broken down, the Predator Air 2 is still longer, and that's because this has an extension on it. So when we talk about 9.4 ounces, we're counting the weight of the cue with the extension. Now, there's no need for me to measure it without the extension. You know it's less than 9.4 ounces. But this is the jump break cue. If I put this on the scale, with this part taken off, it's 11.4 ounces. So the bottom line is, even when the jump break cue is broken down into just being a jump cue, it is much heavier than a designated jump cue. That's why you have a designated jump cue in your bag if you're playing games where you're playing at a high level, you're gonna get deed up a lot, and you need the precision of your jump cue. Let's look real quick at what is a legitimate jump shot. In order for a legitimate jump shot to be executed, 
and you guys have seen this a thousand times, hopefully, you've watched all my videos, you need to shoot down on the cue ball. If you are shooting below the bottom of the cue ball and hitting the felt and the ball at the same time, it is a scoop shot and it is not a legal shot. I had some guy send me a message in um, one of my older videos and he said, you're not going to tell me how to shoot a jump shot. I'm uh, 6'4", 390 pounds, whatever his weight is. <laughs> well, I got news for you. Shoot that shot where I play and you're not getting paid. That is not a legal shot. So make sure you understand the difference between a scoop shot and a legitimate jump shot. Now, if you play at a place where they're not sophisticated enough to know the difference between a scoop shot and a jump shot, and you want to shoot scoop shots, and you're not worried about breaking, um, wrecking somebody's cloth, um, and it doesn't matter to you whether you shoot it properly or not, help yourself. Shoot scoop shots. I don't care. <laughs> but if you want to learn to play pool properly, you've got to learn to shoot a proper legal jump shot. Okay? That's the bottom line. So, let's look at how you execute the shot, and we'll talk about some of the things that you might do wrong if you can't pull off the jump shot. In this video, I'm going to teach you two different ways to execute a jump shot. I'm going to show you a standard jump shot, which you might know as an underhanded jump shot, and I'm going to show you the dart system, which is an overhanded jump shot. Both of these shots can be very effective, and some players favor one over the other. I myself prefer the underhanded method. I seem to have more success with that, but there is definitely advantages to the overhanded method. So I'm going to show you both of them today. And as you improve, you'll find them interchangeable. You'll use the dart for some situations and the underhanded method for other situations. For the remainder of this video, we're going to refer to them as the underhanded shot and the overhanded shot, just for simplicity purposes. So starting with the underhanded shot, what is your contact point and your angle on these shots? Now, from a simplicity standpoint, I would say you want to look at the angle in and the angle out as being equivalent. What does that mean? If the balls are closer, you're going to have to come down on the cue ball more directly, closer to a 90 degree angle than if the balls are further apart where you get to get away with a shorter angle, such as a 45 degree angle. As you can see here, the two balls that I need to clear, as long as the cue ball leaves the table at the same angle that I'm shooting it, I'm going to clear those balls. This is something that you develop over time when shooting these shots over and over again. But the math is simple. It's just like shooting a bank shot, except you're banking not off a rail, but off of the table. Now, in the real world, that ball is very hard, phenolic, and it's coming off a slate table. So chances are your rebound angle is not going to be exactly the same as your contact angle, simply because a lot of energy is being used up in just getting that ball off the table. So you kind of want to cheat a little bit in that if you need to get that cue ball up, at a 45 degree angle, you're probably going to want to have closer to a 50 or 55 degree angle going down on that ball. Now your contact point can get quite complicated. It is something that you develop over time, but for the basis of this study, we're going to have you place your contact point at the center of the cue ball. So imagine I'm drawing a line from the tip of the cue through the cue ball and down to the table and now striking it just about a half a tip, a quarter of a tip below that mark. The interesting thing is even when you watch this shot in slow motion, especially when you watch the shot in slow motion, it looks like the cue is getting under that ball and lifting it. But if we freeze the frame right here, you can see that is not the case. The ball is well on its way before the cue bounces off the table and starts to move back up. So you're not scooping the ball by any stretch of the imagination, but it does look that way in slow motion. So here are the building blocks of this jump shot. Number one, you have to have a good strike point. 
if you're hitting that ball too high or too low, you may not clear the object ball. This is something that you develop over time, but use the references that I gave you as a starting point. Number two, you need to have a very good open hand bridge that allows you to get to the point where you can hit that cue ball most of the time at about a 45 degree to 55 degree angle. Next, you need to make sure you follow through on this shot. You have to commit to this shot or it is not going to get airborne. Next, you need to have a good stance where you can get over the ball. Your feet can be almost parallel or they can be very close to the way they look in a regular pool shot. But you're going to have to get yourself close enough to the shot where you can get the proper angle. Next, and very important, you have to have a very light grip on the cue. I tend to flare my fingers out like you see in the illustration here to remind me to not put a death grip on this cue. This is going to be one of the things that causes a lot of you pain. If you hold the cue too tightly, you are not going to get that ball airborne. When you put all of these things together, you will be able to execute this shot. A quick course in how to get to the point where you're clearing a ball. Number one, work on jumping over a piece of chalk. For some of you, this is going to happen on the first try. Some of you is going to happen on the 20th try. Then you're going to try to clear two pieces of chalk. And now you're going to clear an entire ball. Also, shooting between two balls is easier than clearing an entire ball. Trust me, once you get this shot down, you're not going to want to stop doing it. So I recommend you use a break cloth on your table to protect the felt while you're shooting this shot over and over again. It will leave hot spots on your table. If you're babying your table, there's going to be certain shots in pool you just simply aren't going to be able to execute. Some of the more powerful draw shots, the masse shots, the jump shots, you'll have a pretty table with no spots on it and no specialty shots in your game. So use a break cloth to protect the table as much as possible, but understand that's one of the costs of playing pool. So how do you aim your jump shot? With the underhand jump shot, aiming is very, very important because you're not looking at the object ball during your shot. You're looking down at the cue ball, most likely, depending on the angle that you have. But in most cases, you do not have eye contact with that ball. So aiming becomes key. Now, the best way to learn to aim is the same way you learn to aim with every other pool shot when you first learn to play. You practice it over and over again, working on keeping your cue and your stroke and everything else straight. Uh, one of the techniques that I use to practice aiming is to shoot between a set of balls. Now, once you can do this, you can move them closer and look to split those balls also. Now, this drill that you see on the screen is great because if you put unwanted English on it, the ball won't return to hit the uh, ball that you just jumped. Another one and a lot more fun is to just jump balls and play them in the side pocket. So if you have a half dozen or so cue balls, you can do this with the cue balls, but if you don't, it's okay to do it with object balls. You're just practicing clearing the ball and making it in the pocket. So let's talk about that jump masse. The jump masse is actually going to be easier than you would imagine. If you learn to shoot the jump shot as instructed, all you need to do to add masse to it is to move your Q-tip to the extreme side. As you can see, I lined up the shot and now I move my Q-tip to the extreme right-hand side to put right-hand spin on this ball as it lands on the table. You will develop a knack for how far over you need to be, how much energy you can put on the ball, and exactly where you should aim. Now, if you see the drill that's on the screen, you can see that I'm pointing at a drop zone. This is where I'm trying to get the cue ball to land. If you land in that spot, you will get that cue ball to curve around and reach its target. Now, I generally aim for the closest spot I can get to the object that I'm trying to avoid 
without hitting it. The aim is pretty much the same as it is with every other jump shot. You're aiming at a particular spot, you get your head down, you shoot the shot, but this time it has spin on it. And this is a much more fun drill also where you're just trying to shoot balls in the far corner pocket. But you can see how close I come to the objects that I'm looking to spin the cue ball around. With most jump shots, especially jump masse shots, accuracy is relative. In most cases, you're either shooting at a ball that's sitting in the pocket or you're just trying to hit a ball that will get you out of trouble. So let's take a look at the overhand or dart style of jump shot. There are certain factors that are key in order to making this shot work. The overhand jump shot is usually the shot that you go to when you're jumping balls that are closer. When you have balls that are closer or that you have situations where you want the cue ball to land earlier, these are the shots that benefit from the overhand jump. Now here are the building blocks for the overhand jump shot. Your stance is going to be very similar to other jump shots, but you're coming in from a much steeper angle. So you may need to spread your legs further out to get down on the shot. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to hold the cue with three fingers. As you can see, I'm holding it like a dart. That's why we call it the dart method. And when you get down on the shot with your good bridge, you're going to move the cue through the ball with a flicking motion, just like you're throwing a dart through that cue ball. The more you can execute this shot with wrist action as opposed to moving your entire arm, the more success you will have with the shot. Your contact point, your angle in, angle out will be the same as it is with the underhand jump shot method. But that wrist action is definitely key here. If you watch me shoot these two shots, you'll notice that my arm gets involved in the stroke. And what you want to do is try to have more wrist action and less arm action. So how do we shoot the overhand jump masse shot? Well, the good news is a lot of things are very much the same. Many of these factors are the same as they are with the underhand jump shot. All you're doing this time is using your overhand shot. You're most likely going to use it on shots where the balls are closer, but fundamentally the shot is the same outside of your stroke. Find your target spot, have a good bridge, get that excessive English on the ball, and execute the shot the same way you would otherwise. The fifth shot we're going to show you today, some of you will remember from my video on getting out of traps. Here we have a situation where we have balls that have created an obstacle for us. We can't necessarily shoot that short jump shot and we can't necessarily shoot a multi-rail kick shot. So we come off of the rail in order to play a ball that's on the other side of the table. Now, if you have a good overhand jump shot, you could actually jump from that position and clear those black balls. But this is another option that is available to you, it does not involve a jump cue, and is uh, heartbreaking to your competition when you make it. You're going to cue up for this shot at about a 25 to 30 degree angle, and what you're doing is putting downward pressure on that cue ball, which will cause it to elevate as it hits that long rail. Because the cue ball is in the air when it hits the long rail, it becomes even more airborne once it hits the rail and allows you to clear those balls. This, like many other shots in pool, require a knack, but it's something you should practice because I've seen matches where professional players were in a situation where if they had this shot, they would have gotten out of trouble, but as a result, ended up giving up ball in hand or totally missing a shot or scratching or something of that nature. So give that one a try. It looks like a trick shot, but trust me, it does come up and play, and it is beneficial to have in your bag. 
Have a great day, guys. I hope you got something out of this. Hit me in the comments and let me know what your favorite jump shot is. And if you haven't shot jump shots in the past, whether or not you're going to give it a try. Have a great day. Right, but one bite you said, so if you're gonna find me for my heart, all you're gonna get